Is the Arc'teryx Beta AR worth $750? Let's find out. The Arc'teryx Beta AR is a hard shell jacket meant to protect you from the rain, wind, and snow. It's only for weather protection, so it doesn't provide any insulation for warmth. The Beta series is an all mountain jacket. The AR stands for all around. They also have a LT, which is a light version. They also have the Beta SV, which is for severe weather. In comparison, the Alpha series is more meant for climbing. Arc'teryx also has some more street focused um, series of jackets. The Beta AR retails for $750, but you can pretty reasonably find it for 20% off at different outlets or when Arc'teryx has their Boxing Week sales, their Black Friday sale, etc. Here are the features of this jacket. The Beta AR uses the Gore-Tex Pro most rugged material. In comparison, the uh, Beta Long, and I don't know if it's called the Beta LT or it might just be the Beta jacket now, uses Gore-Tex CNET, which is not gonna be as durable. Um, supposedly, the Gore-Tex most rugged is going to be uh, more durable to abrasion, as well as more water resistant and breathable. It comes with taped seams and waterproof zippers for extra weather resistance. The Beta AR is one of Arc'teryx's only hard shells that comes with the drop hood. The drop hood is essentially a hood that is separate from the collar. Uh, in comparison, there's the Storm hood, which the other Beta jackets have, as well as the Alpha jackets, where the hood and the collar are integrated together. But as you can see, I can zip up the collar here, and the hood is still back here and you can flip it up and down much easier. In comparison with the Storm Hood, where you're gonna to have to undo the zipper a bit to actually get the hood on and off. The hood is fully adjustable. You can pull the back here, which will tighten the sides. You can also pull back here, which is gonna actually pull the front backwards a bit. Finally, you can also pull the cinch cords here, which will bring in this and really give you a full form-fitting hood. And the hood is helmet compatible, so it should work with most regular sized climbing helmets or ski or snowboard helmets. The jacket is also adjustable at the bottom hem, so there are two different uh, cinch cords on each side, so you can pull and cinch in the bottom to help prevent any wind from coming up. There are also very nice Velcro tabs on the cuffs, to cinch that up and prevent any wind from coming in the wrist cuff. There are two hand pockets in the front, as well as a pocket on the inside that says Beta AR, where you can put your phone. Additionally, the Beta AR has pit zips that have two-way zippers, which is really nice for dumping heat. As far as I'm aware, the uh, lower end Beta models do not come with the pit zips, but double check that. And in terms of weight, I have the large, and according to our Arc'teryx website, it weighs 450 grams. Let's talk about the comfort and fit of the Beta AR. For reference, I am 6'1", about 175 pounds, and I ordered this in a size large. That's very similar to most of the other products that I order from Arc'teryx. For example, the Atom LT I also have in a large. If you plan on layering different pieces together, generally it's recommended to maintain the same size across all the different Arc'teryx pieces. Based on how large it is, I could have got a medium, However, I wanted to be able to layer different pieces under it for snowboarding as well as during the cold weather months. If you're only gonna be using the jacket for rain, you could possibly size down and then there would be less room on the inside, but I chose to maintain my size. The Beta Air is designed to fit layers underneath, for example, for snowboarding or anything like that. Keep in mind that the Beta Air is designed for layering. The only issue I've had with the fit of the Beta Air is the length. Uh, even with a large at my height, I find it's just too short. If I could go back, I would have gotten a different model, like the Beta Long, or I believe the Beta LT even is longer than this model. Um, I just find it's way too short. If it's raining, my thighs get wet very easily, and so I need either rain pants or something like that to prevent my legs from getting wet. And when I lift up, um, it really comes up and to about my hip width. And so I know a lot of people have noted that the Beta AR is kind of short, and I definitely agree with that. If you are on the taller side, I would recommend going with a different model. If I could go back, I would personally go with a different model, just based on the height of it alone. The other issue with Comfort is the drop hood on this. A lot of people complain about the drop hood on the Beta AR. Almost all of Arc'teryx's other jacket models do not have this hood and I really wish it did come with a storm hood. When I do layer this with the Atom LT, it can be very uncomfortable. I'll actually show you that right now. 
Here I have the Arcteryx Atom LT in a size large. I bought these around the same time with the plan of layering them together for snowboarding. As you can see, if you have the Beta AR and the Atom LT zipped up, the hood kind of sits here. And depending how many layers you're wearing, this can be annoying. If you do have both hoods up at the same time, there's no issue really. However, there's often going to be times when you're not wearing the Beta AR hood. Um, and as well, since I wear this during the winter, I do like having the hood available. If you do plan on layering with the Beta AR, I would recommend getting mid layers without a hood, just because of how uncomfortable this can be, especially if you have a neck warmer or balaclava on as well. I just find it's very tight around the neck. I'm going to be going over the use cases of what I use this jacket for. I use it as a hiking hard shell, as well as a rain jacket for when I go traveling. This is partly because it's very lightweight. It also looks decent when you're out in the town and it's also very durable. I also just use it as an everyday rain jacket if I'm walking my dog. Additionally, I got the Beta AR to use while I'm snowboarding. That's because it has more durable outer fabric than some of the other Beta models and because it provides additional room for layering. Furthermore, I got the Beta AR because it has that Gore-Tex most rugged and it has reinforced shoulders so that when you're wearing a backpack and hiking for long periods of time, you're less likely to get abrasion on those shoulders. Now I'm going to be going over how well the Beta AR has performing for my needs. The Gore-Tex Pro Most Rugged is gonna be more breathable, water resistant, and durable than the lower end Gore-Tex materials used in the other Beta models. I have had zero issues with the Beta AR wetting out. My girlfriend does have the Zeta AR, which does seem to wet out and the DWR seems to not last as long, but for whatever reason on the Beta AR, it does uh, bead water very well and has continued to do so after over a year now. Keep in mind that I do regularly wash and treat my jacket with DWR. However, during the winter months, I do wear another mid layer and maybe even a fleece underneath so that wind isn't really an issue. However, just keep in mind that I don't really personally find it winter resistant. Additionally, the pit sips have been great for venting out heat and preventing me from over sweating in this jacket while I hike. It's also great because you don't need to unzip the middle zipper to dump your heat and you can maintain your dryness while you're hiking while still dumping heat. In terms of durability, the Beta AR again does use the Gore-Tex most rugged, so you would assume that it's going to be much more durable than some of the other Gore-Tex products out there or regular rain jackets. And as I have found using this consistently for over a year, I've had zero issues with the durability. Again, that's because I have regularly maintained it, but there is no abrasion, there is no issues with it. And when I wear it, it feels very bomb proof. If it's raining, you just feel super protected. Or if you're walking through a forest or anything like that, I am never worried that it's gonna potentially rip or get a hole poked in it. I'm going to quickly talk about maintaining your Gore-Tex jackets. Um, I find this is something that's not super known in the community. And I think it's important to talk about to maintain your jackets. Your Gore-Tex jacket should be washed regularly with some sort of performance wash. This is the Granger's performance wash. There are other brands like Nick Wax that you should be using regularly, depending how often you use your jacket. Uh, at least a month if you're using it regularly throughout the week. Additionally, after washing, you should be using some sort of DWR repellent spray, spraying all over it before you put the jacket in the dryer. Please check on the Arc'teryx website where they will give you details on how you should be washing and drying your jacket to maintain it and maintain the water resistance. In conclusion, the Arc'teryx Beta AR has been a really good hard shell for what I've needed it for. It's definitely the nicest hard shell I have ever owned. I've only ever owned regular rain jackets and I've never actually owned a true dedicated hard shell. If I could go back, I would have most likely got a different model just because of the length of the jacket as well as the drop hood. However, I really wanted the ability to layer underneath and I also wanted the pet zips. It was kind of a trade-off on what to choose. I tried to, I decided to sacrifice on the hood, but I still really wish it had a longer fit. The other option would have been the Beta SV, which would have had all the features I'm looking for. It would have the storm hood, and I do believe it would also be a bit longer. The issue is that it's $100 more than this one, so it depends if you're really willing to spend that amount of money. It really is an all around jacket. It doesn't do anything super well, but it does everything mediocrely, I guess. There's better snowboard shells out there, like the Rush or the Sabre. 
There's better dedicated rain jackets for city use. There's also better jackets for mountaineering like the Alpha series. So this kind of does everything okay, but nothing exceptional. If you are looking for an all around jacket, this could be something you're looking for. But if you're looking for a more dedicated piece to a specific activity, I would definitely look at a different model. And for most people, I do really think that Gore-Tex is just overkill for most people. It's not really necessary and you can get a rain shelf for half the price that's probably going to be doing everything you want it to do. If you are looking for something that is going to fit a bunch of different use cases, including snowboarding, then I would consider picking something up like this. But if you're not going to be using it for snowboarding, then I would probably recommend just getting a cheaper rain jacket. So overall, I really don't think the Beta AR is worth $750. If you can get it for like $500, $550, I think it might be more worth it, assuming it fits exactly what you're looking for. But generally, I would probably look at one of Arc'teryx other shells or look at another brand that has a cheaper option. If you do have one of the other beta jackets, let me know what you think about it and what your issues are with it. And I might end up picking it up to replace this beta AR. Please like the video and subscribe and thank you for watching my review.